Seven billion dollars in gold alone, plus other artifacts, have been resting under the sea for well over a hundred years, and they recovery efforts are about to begin in this breaking news story. We'll talk about it and the significance of it, and so much more as we explore. <laughs> Yes, you may have heard of the RMS Republic. You may have seen the History Channel special about this. I watched it. It was quite fascinating. And there is a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of money spent, and a lot of research into this. If this thing is as big as they say it is, it's going to be a huge deal and could very well reignite the excitement over gold to the levels we've not seen since the Bob Menendez gold bar story. That's right. So as time moves on here, from, and there's a long history with this that we're going to get into, but principals in the Lords of Fortune Limited Liability Corporation, which is a shipwreck recovery company, are counting on being able to begin recovery in June of this year, 2024, of nearly $10 billion in cargo from the sunken RMS Republic off the coast of Massachusetts. Yeah, it's crazy. Now I'm gonna go over, that's from Coin World. I'm gonna go over here to uh, the Lords of Fortune website, talk a little bit about the history behind this thing here. The RMS Republic was a steam powered ocean liner built in 1903 by Harlan and Wolf in Belfast. In 1909, while sailing for the White Star Line, she collided with the immigrant ship SS Florida and was lost at sea. The RMS Republic was equipped with a new Marconi wireless telegraphy uh, t telegraphy transmitter, I assume that's how you pronounce that word, and issued a CQD distress call resulting in the saving of about 1,500 lives. Known as a millionaire ship because of the number of wealthy passengers who traveled by her, she was described as a palatial liner and was the flagship of the White Star Line's Boston service. At 5.47 a.m. on January the 23rd, 1909, while in a dense fog, the inbound immigrant ship SS Florida struck the outbound Republic on her port side, just aft of amidships, opening her hull from the upper deck to below the waterline. Her engine room and after spaces immediately began to flood, although considered unsinkable, Progressive flooding continued, and the battle to save the ship was lost while being towed back to New York. Keep in mind, this is a couple of years before the Titanic. So, there's a lot happening here, a lot going on. I'm going to get to the gold in a moment here. Uh, so, she sank stern first 39 hours after the collision. Prior to her loss, she was one of the largest and most luxurious liners afloat on the planet. Soon after her sinking, reports began to circulate that large gold shipments remained in her holds. The wreck of the RMS Republic was discovered by Captain Martin Byerly in 1981. She, ties approximately, she lies approximately 50 miles south of Nantucket Island in approximately 270 feet of water. Salvage expeditions in the 1980s attempted to locate the gold but were unsuccessful. However, the ship contains many other treasures. In addition to gold, many ship and personal artifacts remain. Survey expeditions were completed in 2009 and 2010 to image the wreck, utilizing side scan and multi-beam sonar. In 2010, an ROV was inspected to complete and completed utilizing color video and sector scanning sonar. In 2015, the wreck was re-inspected as part of the History Channel nine one-hour episode series billion dollar wreck and i saw that series it was quite intriguing um now the white star palatial passenger liner rms republic known as the millionaire ship is perhaps the most famous treasure ship wreck of all time and may produce the largest treasury recovery soon after her collision with another ship in a dense fog off norman's island um and her consequence consequence a loss Rumors swirled in New York City 
that she had carried a mysterious $3 million cargo in U.S. $20 gold coins, newly minted, known as Double Eagle, such as you see on your screen here. A U.S. Navy payroll operational fund shipments of $800,000 also entirely coined to be delivered to the U.S. Atlantic battleship fleet, uh, then in Gibraltar on the final leg of its record-setting circumnavigation of the globe, in addition to the $500,000 in court claims actually filed in resulting litigation as a result of passenger losses and their personal effects. All of these values are in 1909 dollars, when gold stood at $20.67 an ounce. Yes, indeed, that's right. That was at a time when these were circulating coins. Of course, most of those coins were also delivered to Europe and the like um, as part of other trade with other countries, mostly. These really did not circulate uh, vastly here in the United States as money. Um, a lot of people don't realize that, but usually it's the $10 gold coins that did that. But nonetheless, there's other parts where they uh, theorize that these were gold eagles, not gold double eagles. Um, Lords of Fortune has established a U.S. Navy coin money shipment of $800,000. Eight tons of mixed period coins was lost. The cargo has been conservatively appraised at $200 million today. In addition, Lords of Fortune now believes that the original $3 million in 1909 value shipment was only a much of a part larger $25 million shipment. 45 tons of gold double eagles, a shipment to the Russian State Bank for transshipment by their battleships, also waiting at Gibraltar to St. Petersburg. All of these values are $19.09 when gold gold stood at that $20.67 an ounce. Of course, uh, that's $20 in these because these are 0.96 ounce gold coins here. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, in the summer of 2024 will be coming soon, and that's when this thing will be recovered. So it's very interesting. Now, some of their press releases mention gold eagles, but I think they, mention, they meant gold double eagles. Uh, Coin World mentions gold eagles and not coin double eagles. But this is remarkable. This could be big news. Now, I will say this, that there's been a lot of research, a lot of money has been spent in this uh, effort. In fact, uh, it, Lords of Fortune... It's more than 10 years of litigation with the U.S. government in which the government laid claim to all the gold aboard the Republic. Byerly explains in addition to the U.S. Navy cargo, the U.S. government ended up with a subrogated interest in the uh, Tsarist gold. Uh, when the Bolsheviks repudiated Tsarist debt in 1918, uh, the U.S. government bailed out of the New York banks and investors who had purchased Tsarist bonds. The ownership then fell to them according to Byerly. The problem for the U.S. government is that shortly after they had recognized the Soviet Union in 1933, they then paid themselves from seized Tsarist assets, assets which the U.S. government had frozen in 1918. So the U.S. government couldn't double dip into the Republic's gold. And that's pretty remarkable. That leaves it free and clear for them. The U.S. government's claim has since been dismissed with prejudice, and in 2011, Lords of Fortune LLC was awarded legal title to the wreck and all of her cargoes by the U.S. District Court in Boston. All future claims are also barred by the courts. They're going to be able to keep it all, well, them and their investors. The difficulty in recovering Republic's cargo was not finding the wreck, nor the decades of legal batters, battles, nor will it be recovering her cargoes. The technology today to accomplish that, although expensive, already exists. The greatest difficulty was piercing the government cover-up of the loss. A necessary cover-up at the time in order to maintain peace and world stability, said Byerly. So that's pretty remarkable to see how he's been able to navigate all of this and be able to get to where he is now to be able to make uh, this effort. Finally, it's all going to come to head in June when the recovery starts. It's going to be a difficult process, but... I think he's feeling pretty confident that all of that gold will be there. The next step is to remove thousands, uh, several thousand tons of collapsed decks and debris on top of where he believes the gold to be. A minimum of $7.5 million is needed to reach the gold chamber. That's right. It's going to be a very expensive proposition just to get there to this, to this gold. Uh, $7.5 million for a $10 billion plus cargo. I think that's probably worth it. Um, the total expense is expected to fall in the range of 20 to $25 million. 
But once gold is seen on a $10 billion plus cargo, we can debt finance any amount needed to complete the recovery. So this is not going to be an easy task. It's not easy to dig that deep. I saw the series on the History Channel, and uh, the, what he had mentioned there is exactly right. It's, uh, it's going to be a bear to, do, to, get, to get these coins out. But can you imagine pulling up freshly minted 1909 gold eagles? I don't have any 1909s. This is the closest date I have is from 1910. And nonetheless, these things could probably potentially go into the market. And once they hit the market, you know, then more than likely we'll see uh, these things sell in PCGS or NGC slabbed uh, uh, holders. And you'll be able to buy them just like you did with the um, other treasures that have been found, like the 1857 wreck. Um, that is pretty remarkable, pretty amazing story indeed. Uh, this is fascinating. Now, I'm going to put this video under the Found Precious Metals playlist. I hope you will check out other videos in that playlist. Uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff that has been found over the years, and I've documented a lot of it on this channel. And I hope this, you will consider subscribing to the channel and pressing that like button if you found this information uh, in, informative and insightful and entertaining. And the other message about this, I think, is a larger one, not only about government cover-up, and I think essentially as well as a complicit media that we find ourselves uh, at war with today, but also looking ahead towards the future of how this thing, if this thing were to be recovered, and, and how, how this will make news. They will not be able to avoid it, uh, covering this. And that means that more news about gold, more excitement about gold means more people are going to start stacking gold and accumulating gold because they understand that it is something that has stood the test of time and has preserved the value that we see, that we know it does. And more of these coins that are out there, it would be very fascinating to have a piece of history as well. Let me know what your thoughts about this story are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.